Welcome to Your Money Matters show. This week we have we are going to be talking about money and we've always been talking about money but the question is what is a what aspect of money we are going to be talking about today. So yeah, we are going to be talking about saving um and investing. So that's going to be the focal point of this um half of the half of um the show. And then later on in the second half we'll be looking at financial um in the context of mortgage and what do mortgage looks uh, mortgage lenders are always looking into. But as usual, before we start, we always look at um our tips of the week. Yes, our tip tips of the week tips of the week is is to how to keep your tax bill in check yeah let me repeat how to keep your tax bill in check so there are a number of ways of doing it and there are overall four so let's start with first first is share assets with your spouse or civil partner let's say between two you can effectively double your tax free allowances if you pay tax at different rates transfer can be beneficial if even if tax is due a couple transferring dividend tax liability from a higher rate to a basic rate partner will pay tax at 7.5% rather than 32.5 that's when we're dealing with share assets with your civil partner or spouse partner So if you're single the outcome is different but if you show it as a couple it works out much more favorable. Now the second one is declare non-ISA losses. So non-ISA is basically is when your savings in an a, a, an account um which has a special um I suppose um um disc- discretion however if it's non isa related then it's very different especially non isa investment so if you make a loss from selling non isa investment you can set this against capital gains from other disposables in the same year or carry it forward to offset future gains so is declaring your non isa losses is my second tip and the third is remain a basic rate tax buyer so what does it mean basic uh rate tax buyer pay more much less um let's say if we were to, we went to a capital gains tax or dividend tax than higher rate tax buyers and 10% rather than 20% so if your overall income is higher than the higher rate threshold you may be able to stay below uh below this by making extra payments into a pension scheme and savings a, a pension scheme and claiming tax relief now fourth one is plan share disposals carefully so rather than selling or transferring a complete holding of shares to an isa split them into batches and make several disposal either side of the tax share so there we are that's my tips of the week on this part of the show yes so now let's move as usual on to our major topic now the, for this show i'll be looking at whether to save money or invest money and as i go on i'll be exploring the differences between these two um a uh, way of saving as i guess or investment and uh, who should save and are you ready to invest it's all fine saying you want to invest but are you ready and also we were looking at some goals um in terms of saving and investments and um, set your goals and how to go about doing it yeah so first things first when we look at savings the question really is in in fact savings and investment is what are the differences so let's explore saving well saving is really is about putting money aside and we are talking about putting money aside bit by bit you usually save up to save up to pay for some things 
specific. Some people might save, let's say, to go to Bangladesh or、um, India, Pakistan, Japan, wherever it may be.、Um, Others might save for、um, the deposit for a home. Or, may, or even some people might think about saving in case something goes wrong, like a boiler. When a boiler needs fixing, obviously you need money. The question is, where do you get the money? This is where sa- savings、um, kick in. But saving usually means putting your money into cash product, in other words, into an account, either a savings account in a bank or a building society. Now, that's savings for you. But how is that different from investing? Well, investment takes a, a different form of shape, where again we are dealing with your money, but where you think about ways to grow your money, not through saving, where you put in gradually, but it's where, where you, grow,、uh, you grow your money by buying things that you think will increase in value. And I can give you, a, for example, I suppose, just to kind of make it more. Clear for you. One would be, I suppose, is looking at investing in stocks or investing in a property. And I understand from my reading and observing in our communities, buying properties to rent. And of course, when you do that, you're doing a number of things. Obviously, you're getting money out of rent when you rent out the property, which pays for your mortgage, but also the property itself has a long term investment value. I.e., the value of the property will go up as time goes on because,、um, you know, the property price in Britain or most importantly in London is rocketing up. So, therefore, we're thinking of investment. Now, the other form of investment would be is, is shares in a fund. Now, to make it even more kind of like more broad, some people actually buy.、Um, Spend money on old furniture because they think、um, investing in furniture is good because the value of antique furniture、um, uh, g o up as time goes on. So, for example, let's say if you have a, 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 a cupboard which is very beautiful, well designed, built in, I don't know, 18th, 19th century, you can imagine how the sellers or dealers want the furniture or Future buyers want the furniture because the cost of it goes up as time goes on. But of course, there are no doubt risks. Now, let's move on to who should save. Yeah, so saving so, and who should save. And I'm afraid the reality is not everyone needs to save, it is depending upon your circumstance. But some may save. To set up an emergency fund. Now, for example, everyone really should do their best to build up an emergency saving fund. And the general rule is to have at least three months' worth of living expenses saved up in an, ins- in an instant access saving account. And the reason being is it to help you pay your rent in case something goes wrong, hence, it's emergency fund, school fees. Food and any other essential outgoings that you might have. So, really, it is about saving for in case something goes wrong, saving for a rainy day.、Um, the other one is to keep saving. Of course, who should save is to keep saving, and、uh, you would be doing that、uh, now that one's emergency fund is out of the way, but it's really about keep saving as a principle, i.e., Usually, British government's guideline is that you would save, let's say, 10% of your earnings each month、um, that you can afford. So, at least t- the gradually, as time goes on, you will build up a reser- reservoir of your income. Now, that's obviously subject to you setting your goals and putting away enough money to buy what you want. This could even be, let's say, for example, a house, deposit, wedding, or even a trip. Now, who should、um, and shouldn't save? I should actually make it clearer. It's not who should be saving, it's more about when you should be saving. So, the only time, I suppose, or more like when you should not be saving. So, the only time you shouldn't save, or even let's say invest, if 
there, is, there are more important things you need to do with your money. So, for example, let's say when you don't think about investing, you don't think about saving, is when you are in um, trouble. Financially, you are in trouble. So, in that scenario, you need to think about really to looking for advice, looking for support. And uh, in that case, government has set up a number of um, advice services. If you are struggling financially, the most obvious thing would be is approaching your local advice centre. Either it might be your local citizen advice or, or community advice centre where, um, where organisations are designed to support you when you're financially struggling. That's when you shouldn't be saving, but you think you should be thinking about ways to dealing with the debt but, um, instead of save or invest. Then the question boils down to, are you ready to invest? Yeah, so in terms of being ready, um, there are a number of things we need to think about. And um, whether or not it makes sense for you depend on your goals, especially uh, if the uh, investment is for long term, short term or medium term. So really, you need to think about uh, where your interest lies. Is it f a quick buck for up to the next five years? Or, or you're, you're quite relaxed about it, it could be between five and ten years. Or is it longer term, let's say ten years or more, such as you might think of pension. So with short term goals are really, um, as I said, it's for the next five years. But it's it really is quite a quick one. So then it might be that you're thinking of saving into cash deposit or like or your, your back, like your bank account or savings account, because uh, and it's simply because short term is always thinking about what you do now rather than what you might do in, in the near future. For example, stock market might go down in the short period, short term period, so therefore investment might not be the best option. So that's why maybe um, using your local uh, bank account is more useful because then you can gradually just put some money in and uh, and it builds up for a, a period of time that is not too long and it's not too far distance. Now, um, medium term goals, it, again, it very much depends with medium term goal, uh, goal really. Um, cash deposit, deposit might sometimes be the best answer, but it really does depend upon the, the types of risks that you're willing to take. So, yes, in a sense of, um, um, uh, depends upon um, what you're seeking as well as how much risk you're willing to take. So, um, the riskier it will be, the, it's more likely um, you will end up losing money, obviously. But the other thing is you might get a greater return if you're taking risk. So it does really depend in terms of investment. So for example, let's say if you're planning to buy a property in seven years and you know you will need all your savings as a deposit and don't want to risk your money, it might be safer to put your money into a savings account. Um, but bear in mind that your savings, uh, savings is still at risk if you do save because you still get an interest from it, and the interest does depend upon the um, inflation. So what the Bank of England decides to do, if the Bank of England decides to um, decrease the rate of inflation, therefore the interest that you get on your savings interest won't be as high as you like at the time when you put your money in there. So do bear that in mind. But it could be, I mean, yeah, but of course it could be very flexible. Uh, you might even consider investing your money if you're prepared to take some risk. So again, it boils down to risk as well as the amount of money you have um, in terms of medium. But of course, there are long-term goals too. So let's say um, if, you are, if you're 30 years old or older, you might think about um, in investing your money towards retirement pension. Um, I'm sure many people are doing that um, through compulsory work pension. But of course, the reality is if you actually start doing your own calculation, you'll realize that um, it might not go as far enough as things are going these days. It's very likely you'll be working until you drop. So in order to protect your pension or to get a bigger lump sum for your pension, you can't just rely on state pension where you'll get state pension and maybe pension credit to top it up. But 
we need to think of other ways. So this is when, when you have cash or when you want to put some money away in the long term, you may want to think about investment on your retirement pension to top it up beyond just pension credit that you get. But for longer goals, you may want to think about um, uh, think think carefully because um, if it may affect the value of cash savings over the medium to long term. And the other thing is, stock market tends to be better than cash over a longer period of time. So in other words, um, when it comes to stock market, when you're buying shares, we'll, we'll, which we'll talk about briefly a bit later, then, we're, then of course the, the problem is, well, the issue is, are you willing to take that risk where you put the money on stock market? And uh, as we all know, uh, stock markets do fluctuate. In the short term, it may go down. But if you, are, if you have the confidence to go all the way, stock markets um, can help. But of course, you do need to seek advice on this. But um, speaking of stock markets and uh, investing, um, I do want to briefly talk about that the types of investment there are so you can get a feel of how things work and hopefully you'll understand a lot more about um, three things stocks bonds and its and the cash equivalents so yes so there are three types I, I know uh, we, uh, three types in the context of investment so this time we're not going to be talking about um, savings at all so to for you to get familiar um, yeah so there are three types um, we have stocks we have bonds and of course we also have cash equivalent so let's kind of start with stocks um, companies you, you sell shares of stock to raise money so it's the companies they're selling them selling their assets to raise money for startup or growth. So usually when it comes to startup, we're talking about small businesses. And for growth is because in order to expand, they need money. So when you invest in stocks, you're buying a share of ownership in a corporation. That's what you're doing. So you become a shareholder. You have a financial interest in that company because you have invested it through stocks. Um, there are two types of stock. A stock. One is common stock, and shareholders have a percentage of ownership. So, in other words, if you invest in stock, you get an ownership. You have the right to vote on issues affecting the company because you have financial interest and receive a dividend. And that's why the profit that you receive either every you know every six months or or once a year, depending upon how the company functions. But due to the fact that in Britain HMRC wants taxes on t twice a year. The EU, that's why it's twice a year usually, um, and because that's when you check your account and your balance sheet. And the apart from common stock, you also have preferred stock, um, and and that's where shareholders are generally entitled to dividends at specified interval intervals. I mean, in specific times, and in predetermined amounts. So you already know how much you'll be getting, but but you may not have the voting right. That's a difference between common stock and preferred stock. But that's stocks for you. How about bonds? Bonds is basically where when you buy a bond, uh, you, are, you are lending money. You personally are lending money to a company, even government. Government or, for example, the Treasury, British government, may um, say, you know, we need money, can you help? And this is when you say, okay, I'm lending you money. And they say, okay, I owe you X, Y, and Z. So you're actually lending money to government or big companies um, or even yeah, all countries. Uh, bonds are issued for a set period of time, one year, two years, depending upon the term of the bond, um, and, and which interest payments are made to the bondholder. So you get interest too. Um, these amounts uh, of payment depend upon the interest rate established by the issuer of the bond. So it's when they established it. This is called a coupon rate which can be fixed or variable, depending upon the term that you've signed. At the end of the set period of time, which you call that the maturity date, the bond issuer is required to repay the, uh, repay the, the, the amount and the interest. And bonds are considered a more stable investment because 
you don't expect um, government to collapse, state government to collapse, the treasury to collapse. So it's a, it's a, always a less riskier one compared to stocks anyway. So that's stocks for you. Um, now let's move on to uh, cash equivalent. Um, now cash equivalent in investments protect your original investment and let you have access to your money. Let me give you examples. Savings account, money market account, certificate of deposit. These different types of investment generally deliver a more stable rate of return. But cash equivalent investments aren't designed for long-term investment goals, such as retirement. But taxes are paid, the rate of return is often so low that it doesn't keep pace with inflation. So here we are. So we've, we've covered a couple of things uh, in terms of um, looking at um, savings or, or investment. And we have gathered that it's um, better if it's for in longer term, if you want to invest, uh, you may need to think about property or stocks. Um, if it's for savings, it's more about short term, either wedding, either holiday, or it could be even thinking about your deposit for home. Uh, in terms of when it comes to um, uh, investment, we looked at three, um, so at least you can get familiar with it now. And hope um, you found this part of the show very simple and clear. And the next one, it's going to be our repeat in the context of mortgage. Yeah, so what we'll do now is we are going to take a break and then come back.